Fuel drawn from the tank flows to the OEM supplied pre-filter. This filter is a minimum 10 micron filter with a water and fuel sensor. Fuel leaves the pre-filter and flows to the inlet of the ECM cooling plate. The lift pump is controlled by the ECM and runs for approximately 30 seconds whenever the key switch is turned to the run or start position. The output from the electric lift pump ensures that the gear pump is primed so the engine can start quickly. A check valve incorporated into the outlet fitting of the ECM cooling plate ensures that the lift pump output goes to the gear pump and not through the ECM cooling plate. When the gear pump speed reaches sufficient levels, it pulls fuel directly through the ECM cooling plate and the open check valve that is installed in parallel with the electric lift pump. Fuel enters the gear pump where it is pressurized to a minimum of 10 psi at cranking speed and 70 psi with the engine under load. Before the fuel leaves the gear pump, it passes a pressure regulator valve. When fuel pressure is above 175 psi, it acts against spring tension to open the valve. The fuel is returned to the inlet side of the gear pump. The output from the gear pump flows to the pressure side fuel filter. This filter has a 2 micron rating. Fuel from the filter returns to the actuator housing. An air bleed orifice in the housing allows a small amount of fuel to flow to the drain. Any air in the fuel is pushed through this orifice and prevented from entering the high pressure pump. The fuel pump actuator receives a pulse width modulated signal from the ECM. This fuel pump actuator controls the amount of fuel metered into the high-pressure pumping chambers. Controlling the fuel flow into the high-pressure pump prevents pressurizing more fuel than is needed. This actuator is a normally open valve. Current is increased to reduce flow to the pump, thus lowering fuel rail pressure. In the high-pressure pump, the fuel is pressurized by the two cam-driven barrel and plunger assemblies. These assemblies create the high pressures needed for injection. Inlet and outlet check valves act to develop and hold fuel rail pressure. The inlet check valve holds fuel inside the pumping chamber so that it may be pressurized. The outlet check valve holds the fuel rail pressure inside the rail so that it does not leak back into the pumping chamber. A failure of a single pumping chamber results in a pressure imbalance and possibly low rail pressure. The ECM can detect this condition and will register a fault code. Fuel that leaks past the barrel and plunger is collected in a drilling in the pump head and routed to the air bleed circuit for return to the fuel tank. The pressurized fuel leaves the high pressure pump and flows through piping to the fuel rail. This rail and the high pressure fuel line serve as an accumulator, storing the fuel under pressure until it is needed for injection. Because the actuator is a normally open valve, any circuit problem, such as an inadvertently disconnected actuator wire, will cause the actuator to open. This results in maximum flow to the high pressure pump, leading to opening of the fuel rail pressure relief valve. This valve protects the rail, lines, and injectors from any malfunction causing overpressurization.
When the fuel in the rail exceeds the valve setting, the valve opens and fuel is returned to drain. The fuel rail pressure relief valve is a two-stage valve. When closed, only a small area is exposed to the fuel in the rail. This makes the valve a fast-acting valve that opens at approximately 1800 bar. Once opened, the outer plunger moves to its stop and a larger area is exposed to the high-pressure fuel. This causes the inner plunger to open and rail pressure drops to 1000 bar. After the fuel rail pressure relief valve opens, the rail pressure must approach zero to reseat, close the valve. The fuel rail is connected to each of the injectors by a fuel line and a high pressure connector. Edge filters in the high pressure connectors trap large particle debris. If an injector is replaced, a new high pressure connector must be installed. At the injector, fuel flows through the supply inlet passage, pressurizing the injector nozzle and the control chamber above the injector plunger. Injection begins when the ECM energizes the coil and allows the valve ball to lift off of its seat. This allows fuel to flow out of the control chamber to drain, reducing the pressure in the chamber. The reduced pressure above the control plunger allows the needle to lift off of its seat and high pressure fuel to flow into the cylinder through the nozzle. Since the drain passage is slightly larger than the supply passage, the fuel pressure above the control plunger does not build as long as the valve ball is off its seat. To end injection, the ECM de-energizes the coil, which seats the valve ball. The pressure above the control plunger and the force of the spring causes the needle to seat in the nozzle and end injection. Fuel flowing out the fuel return from the injector flows back to the fuel drain block. The drain line check valve is installed in the fitting in the cylinder head. This check valve maintains 0.7 bar back pressure on the injectors. The drain lines route drain fuel from the injectors, fuel rail, and fuel pump to the fuel drain block. From the drain block, a drain line allows the drain fuel to return to the fuel tank.